Eyewitness News, live from the Edison Mall. Hi, I'm Sherry Avery. Coming up in just a few minutes, you'll go back to school with Eyewitness News. You'll be able to watch an ice carver from the Forest Country Club shape a 300-pound of ice into a beautiful finished product. You'll meet Lee Sheriff Candidate Bart Morrill and learn about pet responsibility for your kids from our veterinarian. Plus, we'll have the latest news of the day, and Jim Clark is here with all the weather details. Jim? Sherry, right now it looks really nice over southwest Florida, but we do have some line of thunderstorms moving in. We're going to take a look at that in one. Okay, plus at the end of the news, we'll have a drawing for a back-to-school gift from Moss Brothers. So stay with us, or come on over next to Eyewitness News. They're battered. Why? Her husband was an academic. It is next on TV20. Live from the Edison Mall, this is Eyewitness News at Noon with Sherry Avery and meteorologist Jim Clark. Good afternoon, I'm Sherry Avery. Welcome to Eyewitness News at Noon, coming to you live from the Edison Mall. Now, before we get to the news of the day, we're going to switch over to Jim Clark, who is with an ice carver from the Forest Country Club. Jim, before the news is over, Lotar is going to shape a masterpiece for us. How's it coming? What's it going to be? Well, Sherry, right now we don't have, uh, we just have this large block of ice right behind us, and this is the gentleman that's going to make something of this. Uh, exactly what are you going to uh, be doing here? Uh, flower basket with lovebirds. A flower basket with lovebirds, of which we have one right in front of us here that you've already completed. That's yes, right. Yes, sir. And uh, you can go ahead and get started on that right away. Yeah, He's okay. only got a half an hour, which is not much time. We're going to talk to this gentleman, Mr. Fritz Bubeck from uh, the Forest Country Club. And, uh, uh, what uh, do you do with an ice sculpture at your country club? Well, we use them for quite a few occasions, weddings, receptions, uh, different parties, and he does all kinds of different sculptures, uh, eagles, uh, swans, so whatever the people like to see. Well, this is really kind of fascinating here. He's really just cutting away. Real can he possibly get it done in a half an hour? Well, uh, he can't get the rough outline done in a half an hour. The detail work takes a little longer. It takes anywhere from a half an, uh, from an hour and a half to two hours, depending on the sculpture. Okay, well, we're going to keep uh, you posted on the ice sculpture. Now you're sharing with the latest news. Thank you very much, Jim. Now, today is the first day, day of Lee County Cleanup Week. It goes through the 24th. It means all residents can put up trash alongside their road that is bagged or under 40 pounds, and haulers will pick it up. Lee commissioners declared this week as Lee County Cleanup Week in conjunction with TV20's Project Eyesore. It's an all-out attempt to get rid of all excess trash in Lee County. Our eyewitness news team is at Fort Myers Beach right now to see just how the residents are responding and just see how the garbage haulers are doing. And tonight at 6 on Eyewitness News, we'll have a full report. Geraldine Ferrero's family finances became public today. The figures were supposed to be released this morning, but there was a delay, and they won't be released until 1 this afternoon. The Democratic vice presidential candidate says the figures will go beyond what is required for a national candidate's financial disclosure, and she says that she hopes this will end the controversy. Her feelings are echoed by presidential candidate Walter Mondale. Something else that has been in the news this election year has been the race for Lee County Sheriff candidate. Three Democrats, Democrats have announced against Republican Sheriff Frank Wanaka. One of them is Bart Morrill, a former Saginaw, Michigan police officer. He has a degree in business administration and an administrative budgeting and supervisory background. Now Mr. Morrill is the director of security at the Bell Tower Mall. Now, Bart, there has been a lot of mudslinging in the sheriff's race so far this year, but you haven't gotten into the act. Why is that? Well, there has been a great deal of controversy, uh, Sherry, and uh, uh, I've been running a good, clean campaign. Uh, I've met uh, the present sheriff only twice in my life for a very brief period of time, and I want his job, not his head. What I'm kind? Okay, go ahead. I'm trying to offer the uh, uh, citizens of Lee County uh, a strong, stable alternative. You haven't been as much in the news as the other candidates. Do you think that's because there's been more muscling on their part? Well. Uh, the media has been covering them a great deal more than I have, and, and like I say, I haven't, uh, I have engaged in uh, dealing in personalities. I've been trying to stick to the facts on, on my qualifications and what I can do for the sheriff's department and for the citizens of the county. Give me a couple of things of what you can do for the citizens. Well, for one thing, with my business background, uh, I look at the present structure of the criminal investigation division. They're always uh, complaining that they don't have enough manpower, uh, but when you look at the budget, it's uh, budgeted presently. Uh, there are eight investigators and a deputy in there, 
And from the supervisory rank of sergeant all the way to major, there are 18 people mm -hmm. supervising eight, de eight investigators and a deputy. I feel this is gross mismanagement, and I feel the taxpayers' money should be much more wisely spent. What would you do? I would translate that into a captain, a lieutenant, three sergeants, and 20 investigators for the so same amount of money. So there would be some demotion then? Well, there would be some, some rearranging, yes. All right, what else? Give me some ideas. Well, uh, I feel that uh, it, it's wrong for the citizens here in Lee County to sit in an accident scene and have to wait an hour, hour and a half for a Florida Highway Patrolman to come over and write the accident while all this time they have a, a Lee County Sheriff's deputy sitting there embarrassed because he can't write the, uh, the accident. They're not allowed to. Why aren't they? Because this is the Lee County Sheriff's Department's policy, and I think it's wrong. And it has to be changed. Is it because perhaps they don't have enough men to go no, around? No, they have the manpower. I believe they have the manpower. I believe that entire department has the finance, it has the machinery, and it has the talent to give this county a first-class law enforcement agency that's uh, efficient, effective, and that we can all be proud of, including the deputies. Okay, thank you very much, thank Bart you. Morrill, for being with us. And tomorrow, also on Eyewitness News at noon, we will be having Mason Scott, who is another candidate for Lee County Sheriff. But right now, let's switch over to Jim Clark, who's still working with our ice carver. Jim? Thank you, Sherry. Just a quick update. The ice continues to fly here on this large block of ice. It doesn't look like much yet, but we, it, it's really starting to take shape. It's kind of fascinating. We'll keep you updated on this as the show goes on. Right now, well, stay tuned because in a few moments, we're going to have consumer reporter Deborah Ford here to answer your uh, tips on credit card scandals. So stay with us. many kinds of problems we face every day. One of them is consumer problems. You could have a problem with something you bought or it could be just a problem with what you should buy. Our consumer reporter, Deborah Ford, is going to give us something, some tips on something that she's been researching for a while. Uh, Deborah, what is that? Well, Sherry, it's credit card scams. Let's say that you go to get your credit card bill this month fully expecting that you're not going to have any charges on it because you didn't buy anything this month. But much to your shock and dismay when you open up the envelope, you see a thousand dollars in charges that you never made. Well, you haven't lost your car, you haven't had it stolen, so what could have happened? Well, it probably was not the credit card company's mistake, it was probably the work of a crook. There's a scam going around, and has been for quite a while, involving the carbon copies that you leave behind after you make a credit card purchase. Some theft rings pay people to collect those carbon copies uh, from trash receptacles in the backs of stores. Then a counterfeit card is made with your name and credit card number, and thousands of dollars in purchases are made before the card is retired, usually during the same day. Now, before panic makes you vow never to use a credit card again, there is some good news. Federal law limits your liability on unauthorized use of your credit card to $50. So, you know you have that limit. Now, the problem comes in with automatic teller machines. Banks usually say, unless you notify them within two days of the loss, you're not going to be protected at all by a limit. Uh, the thing to do to protect yourself is to check those credit card receipts and notify credit companies and banks as soon as you know that, that anything is a problem. What about taking the carbon with you? Do that too? Yes, sure. Ask them to give you the, all the carbon copies and you should be for sure protected from that particular scam. Thank you very much, Deborah, for being with us today. And now let's check in on Jim Clark and see just what's going on with the ice carver. Jim? Well, Sherry, thank you very much. The ice chips continue to fly over here. I'm getting a little bit wet, but it is dry weather over southwest Florida right now, but that may not hold up for this afternoon. I'll be right back with the weather after this. Do stay with us. Well, welcome back live at the Edison Mall where we're here today and uh, all this week. It's a good time. You ought to come on down. If you can't make it today, we still have four more days after this to come on down and see what it's like to see a new show live. Right now, we're going to take a look at the weather over southwest Florida. And it's been a great day so far. Nice winds out of the southwest. Nice uh, sea breeze will continue this afternoon. And uh, currently, over southwest Florida, the current conditions show partly cloudy skies bordering on mostly sunny. It's basically very nice out there at the present time. Uh, the current temperature right now is about uh, 70, uh, right, 87 89 degrees, I believe, and the relative humidity is at 67 percent. Winds are from the southwest at 12 miles per hour. The barometer continues to rise very slowly. 
Breaking away and just going back to TV 20 for a second to look at Skyscan Color Radar. We couldn't bring that over to the mall, but there's a picture for you. I was talking about thunderstorms moving in on us. Take a look up around the Tampa Bay area. There is a line of showers that extends not only over land, but out into the Gulf for um, over 100 miles. And it is slowly, very slowly, moving towards the southeast at about uh, 20 miles per hour. And, uh, and it's going to be pushing into the northern portions of southwest Florida perhaps in the next, uh, well, this afternoon, about three or four hours from now. Now, Collier County won't really have to worry about this line of thunder showers, but other thunderstorms may develop over the inland areas later this afternoon, those of the isolated variety. Switching over to the uh, weather eye, we have uh, the satellite picture of the uh, entire globe there, and the only thing we have to worry about on the tropic watch today is a small tropical wave that's barely on the edge of that picture about 1,100 miles to the east of the Lesser Antilles Islands. We'll keep you posted on that as the weekend progresses, but right now, just nothing to worry about from the tropics. Over the United States, we have a line of clouds stretching from Southern California to uh, the Northern Plains, also clouds along the Gulf Coast states and the Eastern Seaboard, and not surprisingly, that's where we find our frontal system. Scattered thunderstorms are expected from Minnesota to Arizona. Some of those up in Minnesota could be uh, bordering on severe this afternoon. Also showers expected scattered variety across the Gulf states and hitting spaces of the eastern seaboard. Otherwise, the rest of the nation is looking just delightful with beautiful sunshine and temperatures pretty much near normal. 80s and 90s will cover most of the nation. Well, some uh, record cool 70s are over the northeast. Beautiful weather there with blue skies, highs in the 70s. That sounds delightful. Hot temperatures over the uh, central portion of Texas where record highs are expected. Here in Florida, you can see those clouds associated with the thunderstorms moving down towards Tampa, towards the clear area, which is southwest Florida. We'll watch for those later on this afternoon. Now to the pinpoint forecast. First of all, all you boaters out there, you'll have southwesterly winds at 5 to 10 knots, occasionally gusting up to 15 this afternoon with the sea breeze. Seas will be relatively light. Tides today? Well, there's one low tide uh, at 3 p.m. this afternoon and a high tide around midnight. Now the pinpoint forecast for everyone out there. We're looking for mostly sunny skies this afternoon. Some scattered showers, especially over the north, the high 92, becoming fair and humid tonight with a low near 78 degrees. And then tomorrow, sunny skies calling for only a few scattered inland showers tomorrow with a high temperature up around 91 degrees. Talk about it's cool over where Sherry is by the ice sculpture. Sherry, how's it going? Oh, it's going just fine. I'll tell you what, if you're hot, come on down because this is going to cool you off. He's already made a border. He's already made a base. And I bet by the end of the show, he will have made it. But stay with us because in just a minute, we're going to talk to our veterinarian about pet care. Stay with us. A lot of us get pets for our kids on the stipulation that if you have a pet, then you have to take care of it. But what happens when the child has to go to school? Who does the responsibility fall to, usually mommy or daddy? Well, Dr. Beth Murphy from the Small Animal Hospital is going to tell us how to avoid that. Now, you brought Chelsea with you, who is just a beautiful dog. This is Dr. Murphy's dog, by the way. And, yeah, here we're going to get a shot of her right now. We're feeding her to keep her quiet. <laughs> How would a child take care of a dog like this while the child is in school? Well, most dogs are fed once or twice a day, and so if, if the dog is fed twice a day, the child can feed it before it goes to school, and then when he or she comes home from school or in the evening, they can go ahead and feed it again. If the mother is home during the day, she may have to take the responsibility of letting the dog in and out if it is an indoor dog. But if it's an outdoor dog, they can just put them out in their backyard if it happens to be fenced in or leave them on the patio, and the dog tends to do fine on their own. Uh, you just want to give the dog lots of attention when you get home and lots of attention in the morning before you leave so the dog doesn't feel like it is being neglected. Okay, now let me ask you two questions in regards to that. You say, put the dog outside. What things do people have to know about keeping their dog outdoors? Okay, we recommend ideally for the dog to be in a fenced-in backyard or some type of a closed-in pen versus being chained, but if the dog has to be chained, that's better than letting them run loose. If the dog is outside, it needs to be in an area, at least have access to an area with a lot of shade and fresh water, and food is not really necessary as long as the dog is getting fed at other times during the day. What about exercise? If the dog is out in, in a free backyard where he's got the fence but he is able to run, then he's going to get plenty of exercise that way. But as far as individual attention, the child or the, you know, the owners can walk the dog and give him a little extra exercise that way. What do you do if you're a mom and you say, but, you know, and your child says, well, Mommy, I just don't have time to do it. I have to do my homework. Is there something that Mommy can say to the child? Well, she just has to emphasize the fact that the dog is the, the child's responsibility and the child took the dog in that manner. And so if the child is not willing to take responsibility, 
I know it sounds cruel, but they can possibly threaten them with, you know, finding another home for the dog if the child isn't going to be responsible. What about cats? and other kinds of pets. I know we have a dog here with us to demonstrate, but are cats a say easier to care for than a dog would be for a child? In other words, let me ask you it differently. What would you recommend as a veterinarian as an ideal pet for a child to have that would not take too much responsibility, but the child could still have a pet? Well, cats, of course, take very little responsibility at all, particularly if they're indoors and they have their litter box. Uh, other small caged animals, such as hamsters, ferrets, uh, well, ferrets aren't caged, but hamsters, gerbils, small animals like that, even a ferret, really don't require a lot of effort, except maybe cleaning the cage a couple of times a week. What, so, about, what about birds? Birds, same thing. They really don't require a lot of effort, except just changing the cage and feeding, you know, putting the food in every day. So, what about psychologically? I know that's a hard question to ask, but just going back to teach a child responsibility and uh, care for an animal, you know, in other words, teaching a child a little bit about taking care of somebody else, what kind of an animal would be best for somebody It'd probably like that? be best to start with a small animal, such as a hamster or a gerbil, where it's not going to take up a lot of room in the house, there isn't that much to clean for them, and that way they learn with a small animal how to slowly get used to, you know, taking that responsibility, and then they can branch on into cats and dogs and the large animals that require a little more time and effort. What about grooming on these different animals? How often should that be done? Well, most of the small animals you don't have to groom at all. Cats, again, unless they have very long hair, they do not need to be brushed. They take care of grooming themselves and same thing with dogs unless they have very long hair you don't have to worry about it and the flea problem of course is more of a problem with cats and dogs you aren't going to have that with the smaller animals such as the gerbils and the hamsters and what do children have to do as far as fleas is there something they can spray them with is there... they can follow the same things that their parents would as far as flea sprays i would recommend the parent help them if they were going to dip the dog but they can spray the animal as long as they're careful to stay away from the eyes and the face one other thing i might add is obedience schools uh, yes. which are very popular these days there are two of them i know in Terry Park on Tuesday and Wednesday nights. I believe there's also one starting up in Cape Coral, and there are also people offering private obedience in the home. I would recommend anyone having a dog uh, to try and go for that with their dog. Chelsea's been through it, although you wouldn't know sometimes oh, by looking at her. Dog. But it makes uh, the dog respect you a lot more. It helps just form that bond between you and the dog. And I think the child, as long as they're probably 12 years old or older, could go ahead and take the dog to obedience school if not the parents could do it. But it makes the best dog much better pet. Well, that sounds like a good solution, too. Now, if you have any questions for uh, Dr. Murphy, be sure to write us here, Care of Pet Set, and she will be happy to answer any of them. And when we come back, we're going to show you the finished ice sculpture, and we're also going to have a back-to-school drawing from Moss Brothers, so stay with us. Welcome back to the Edison Mall. Uh, we have the ice sculpture here, and the man who's uh, made this ice sculpture. Uh, it's, it might be difficult to see on television, so we're going to point out a few things. Here we have uh, two lovebirds up here. Here are the wings. Here are the birds, and they're facing each other as lovebirds should. Flowers go right in the middle here. It's very, very nice, and we put a lot of pressure on this gentleman over here to get this all done in about 20 minutes. It's just about impossible, but uh, it's, a, it's a fine job. Do you normally... how? How much longer would you have liked to have on this ice sculpture? Uh, at least 30, min 30 minutes longer. 30 minutes longer and you would have had it all complete. That's amazing. How, how many years have you been doing this? Uh, 15 years. 15 years and did you start in this country? No, I was starting in Germany. Is this like a sort of kind of a German art ice sculpture basically? It's, no, I think so. Uh, everybody, every chef can do it or uh, try to, to learn it. It's, it's an incredible thing and uh, as I understand there's going to be another demonstration in September that you're going to... Yeah, the, the 8th of September. The 8th of September, and this is terrible because I forgot where it is. But the Civ Lee Civic Center on September 8th, uh, they're going to show you how to do more ice sculpture. It really is incredible, and thank you very, very much. And now we have here at the Edison Mall, I believe, the, it's the giant peacock, and Sherry is standing by, and uh, we have the drawing. Right, Jim, let me get the microphone for you. Thank you. I've been joined by the giant TV20 peacock. Now, all morning, we have been passing out entry forms so that you could enter this back-to-school drawing that TV20 is having. And you can do that any morning. All you have to do is come down to the mall by 10 o'clock, fill it out before noon, and at the end of each show, we will have somebody come up from the audience, and that person will pick a name from the basket with all of these forms in it, Today, the back-to-school gift is from Moss Brothers. It's going to be a jacket and slacks. Now, who do I have here with me? What's your name? Joe Sweeney. And how old are you, Joe? Seven. And what school do you go to? Dr. Phillips. Dr. Phillips. How, how long, what grade are you in? Second. Second grade, all right. 
Now, I am going to mix all of these up, and I'm going to let Joe stick his hand in and pull one out, and then the TV20 Peacock is going to read it. Now, don't look. All right. Let me lift this up. Now, can you read that? And the winner is Erica Lesson. Erica Lesson. Erica L E S S E N, I believe. Uh, Fort Myers. E R I K A. Is she here in the audience anywhere? Or he? Anybody? Okay, well, even though you're not here, Erica, that doesn't mean that you don't win. You do win. Your name was drawn. We do have gift certificates for you, and you will be able, we will see to it that you get it. Now, before we go, we have some people we need to thank here. Thank you very much, Joe, for being with us. We have some people we need to thank. Uh, we need to thank Harmon's TV set and uh, for providing a TV and speakers so that everybody here at the Edison Mall could hear and see what was going on. And we do need to thank Burdines for the beautiful set they provided and all the furniture. But we also have tomorrow coming up, and we don't want to forget about that either. Right, Jim? <laughs> right. As soon as you can find it there, Sherry. We'll talk about there we go. We're, my co-anchor, Rod Green, is going to be here tomorrow, and he'll be interviewing Dr. Ed Guttery, who's a pediatrician, telling you all about health care for kids this upcoming school year. And if I could, I don't have my mic, this is it right here. <laughs> okay, our plan expert, Jim Scrivener, will talk about grapes and how to uh, make wine from them. And he'll be bringing some with him so you can taste them as well. That's our news. Thanks for joining us. Come down tomorrow for Back to School with Eyewitness News. You've got to hand it to them. At least they'd like you to.